Welcome to Sunday Morning here at Wickerson Studios. I am continuing the script definitions of Grasshopper. This one I'm very excited about because it shows uh, the power of mathematics, which I think people uh, uh, forget, and I think there's more of a chaotic approach to it, but there is a absolutely ordered approach to building geometries. As you see spinning on the right are a series of um, uh, geometries that I've affected by using these simple four nodes dealing with absolute value which makes everything within those uh, bars uh, positive uh, factorial which is a multiplication of the number uh, then multiplied by the number prior to it minus one interview uh, inter uh, integer all the way down to one uh, so five times four times three times two times one is five factorial and uh, I have a integer division which will drop everything to the integer after it does a division and I've done a modulus which divides and gives you the remainder and what you're looking at on the one side and I'm going to leave it spinning is I've generated a grid which I can change I've actually uh, called out an, uh, one of the cells so I can have the correct amount I put polygons on them at a four count so those polygons can actually uh, run through uh, this pattern. I really like this pattern and I'm able to grab each one uh, curves this way and uh, in doing so I think that's a nice geometric approach mathematically followed architecturally whatever you have um, uh, to gain access to every other one which allows me to grab this one this one this one this one this one this one and this one now that's a cool pattern but what happens when I start to affect that what I'm going to do is grab those geometries and I'm going to extrude them and I'm going to extrude each one of them through a range uh, which passes through a negative and a positive and in the last case I've just uh, I've got a swap out for the modulus so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to and I've got the script online uh, well I haven't put it up on github yet but I put all the other 36 on basically you can locate where the absolute value is you can locate where the factorial is quickly you can locate where the integer division is and and also where the uh, modulus is so let's take a look at that first geometry there it is that is a geometry that is affected by a step a range of uh, simply grabbing a number an integer value of 10 and you can see I can affect it by up and down by changing the integer value I can drop and raise that um, geometry and I can put it through the negative which will allow me to do this one and I'll leave the other one up uh, actually I think I'll leave them all up and you can take a look at what happens so the first one is here it's the effects of going through an absolute value on positive integers which does nothing to it it just keeps it positive uh, the second one does the negative and you'll see what happens in that it basically um, and I think this is a great example to show people visually in a classroom setting where I'm taking the positive and negative value of absolute but I've got my domain here going from negative four I should put that up there at negative nine to nine and of course in doing so uh, that geometry has to start high because of absolute value it's a big negative number so it's got to start big because it'll turn it to absolute and you get this very cool geometry so there's the first two geometries being affected differently by the positive and negative domains dealing with absolute value let's go into uh, factorial factorial I had to reduce the numbers because as you can see here uh, factorial is going to take those numbers uh, 1 through 5, and it's going to multiply 1 by 1, uh, 2 by 1, 3 by 2 by 1, 4 by 2 by 1, 5 by 2 by 1, and you get this crazy pattern jumping up like this. And it's had to step it uh, because I've only used 5, and there's, uh, I think, the list number. Uh, I use the list system of the list length uh, not being 5, being 10. So obviously there's 2 in each one. But that shows you the power of that. The negative direction is a little different um, when you take a look at that. The negative uh, it has an effect on the numbers just slightly and you'll see it goes up um, uh, in a sense of using the range uh, it staggers up and let me just move that as you watch that uh, how, how it affects differently by having a negative value running through the domain uh, versus a positive because it just doesn't read the negative numbers you see they all default out once it gets too low uh, if I do a negative range it's got to take a while for that start negative five negative four negative three negative two negative one and then it will start to deal with the number system so that's a little way to flatten things by using uh, uh, in, uh, factorial in, in negative domains I'm not sure if anybody's going to use that let's go on to um, this one and this one 
So basically I have two here and you're like, well, what's going on? Well, there's a strange thing happening at zero because you can't divide. Uh, we're taking a look at this one by division uh, of uh, a, a number and then reducing to an integer. So even though I've set my params in a positive and negative direction on this one, uh, you see this one's running through here, this one's running through here. But basically, I've got a division tool that I'll play with later because I have to divide it by something. I don't want to divide by zero. So what I have is as I move this in the negative direction, you know, it'll start the same. But as I move it up, and I'll just rotate it here, as I move it up, you can see that the one is only affected by positive. The other one mirrors itself in the negative. So a wonderful way of an integer division mirroring itself in the negative. And I can take the division down, which just flattens it a bit, as you can see. Uh, the higher the division is the lower it gets. Well, you could put a multiplication on there and have it amplified as well. So there's a nice little pattern of having a quick little negative uh, adjust integer division. Not really necessary, but it, it's there. The last one is a modulus, which is kind of cool. And this is where you get the stepping of things. And I'm going to exit this command here so you can see the steps. And here they are um, in the last pattern. Um, it steps up, then it steps down again. It steps up, it steps down. It's like dealing in mods. Uh, so if I have a division by 5 on 10, it will step up, step up, step up until it has no remainder. So I've done it in the positive direction here. So you see how you really have a slider that does some very interesting things, especially if you take the division. Look at that. So you get this jiggle jiggle, which is what I'm all about. Um, you start applying this to extrusions. It's a random, but it's a pat I mean, it's a, it's a stepping, uh, or let's call it a seed, but it actually seeds this differently. Um, and then you can change your number up here. So if that mimics that, and if you read the same data in, I'm sure you'll get some very controlled geometry. So very nice subtlety. I think the mod, the modulus tool would be the best for going into this. And if I go to negative, and I'll just swap it out, you'll see what the negative does. It does the same thing the past one did in division. It deals with negatives well. So if I have the number, I'm just pulling it uh, modular in the positive negative direction. And of course I was dealing with all this in mathematics and equations and exams at the University of Waterloo, but I hadn't started to visualize and realize the power of that as pattern and beauty, art and architecture. So really step down, grab the script from online, play with those modulars, uh, and you maybe never were using them before, but realize the power of those. And I'm putting it out there for my ARA community, which is a jewelry organization to start to think of uh, staggering and stepping and playing. I'll try and leave this at a good value so it's kind of fun to look at. I haven't added any colors in here yet, but uh, let's just shift and grab every other one and throw it back on a quick rotate uh, turntable. And actually, I won't be able to change its... Uh, uh, view, but I like the artistic view. I've always enjoyed that. Or even pen and ink. I think that's actually very nice to just think about would I ever do that study? And I haven't uh, actually uh, baked anything in, but it's it's modular. Uh, or, or it's a, it's a parametric. So we'll just leave it there and we'll throw in the chart table and leave the video at that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to make math exciting um, and also give a lot more control to the hands of the artist that the architect and, and engineer and programmer have always known. But I'm trying to visualize that. So thanks very much for watching.